So the Bible is one book, but it's also 66 books. And where does each one fit in the big God story? We're going to answer that question in today's video. Now, in case you and I haven't met yet, I'm Keith Farron, your Bible coach. My passion and the focus of this entire channel is helping you move from should to want when it comes to reading, studying, applying, and enjoying God's Word. So if that sounds like something you could use some help with, then you're going to want to click that little button down there so you don't miss a video. Now, the Bible is one book, but it's also 66 books, and it's written by about 40 different human authors, all being inspired by one author, God. Now, I cover that in a lot more detail in this video right here, but this one today is going to look at where does each one of the 66 books fit into that big God story. So this is another video in the Bible Study for Beginners series, and I want to make sure, if you haven't downloaded it yet, I want to make sure you get a copy of my free guide, The Simplest Way to Study Any Bible Passage. You can see the link here on the screen, and of course, all the links are always down in the description. So most people know that here in this one book, of the 66, you've got Genesis, it's going to be the beginning, and Revelation is going to be the end, but then you hear something like, First Chronicles, or Second Kings, or Malachi, or Ephesians, and you wonder, where does that fit? Not just where do I find it, but where does it fit in the big God story? So here's what I thought I would do today. I thought I would take the big God story and break it up into 10 chapters, showing where each of these books fits in those 10 chapters to just give us an overview. Obviously, in the few minutes that we have, this isn't going to be covering every theological deep theme in the Bible, but just so that you can, by the end of this video, know exactly where the different books fit and how this story is told in 10 chapters. Chapter 1 of this big God story is made up of one book. That is Genesis. Genesis is the story of creation, how the world came into being, and how we were created for relationship with God. Also in Genesis, you find how we got separated from God, how sin entered the world, and how God started restoring already that relationship, how he was working toward restoration the whole time. We see at the end of this first chapter, we're introduced to several of what's called the patriarchs, some of our forefathers, if you will, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. You start to see the family of God being formed in chapter one. Now, chapter two is made up of four books. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And in this second chapter, we see the Israelites freed from captivity in Egypt, and we see the establishment of that community of faith, the Hebrew nation and the people of God. We see their laws, we see their rituals, we see their traditions, and we get a picture of this new nation being formed in chapter 2. Now, chapter 3 is all about the nation of Israel and contains 12 different books. This is where you're going to get a lot of the story of the nation of Israel. You see Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Those 12 books tell the start with the Israelites entering into the promised land. And we see in these 12 books, we also see the rise of the first kind of three major kings, King Saul, followed by King David, followed by his son, King Solomon. We also see the rise and fall of many, many kings. We see prophets. This narrative in these 12 books, will the, the chapters that follow, chapters 4, 5, and 6, which complete the Old Testament in the Bible, a lot of what you'll find in 4, 5, and 6 that we'll get to in a moment, this gives the context for it so that when you're reading some of the Psalms or Proverbs or some of the prophets that are to come, you see the context of where these people were in the big God story as you read these 12 books here in chapter 3. We also see here the nation of Israel being divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom, 
called Israel, and the southern kingdom called Judah. Chapter 4 is made up of five books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon, oftentimes referred to simply as the wisdom literature. You're going to have psalms which are filled with lament and praise. Many song lyrics uh, have come out of psalms as well as the wisdom of Solomon in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. We see a lot in these five books about the nature of God as well as the nature of humanity and the nature of life itself here in chapter four, the wisdom literature. Chapter 5 is also made up of five books, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. We call these the major prophets because they're the longer of the prophetic books in the Bible, and they contain the sternest warnings and the most uh, beautiful messages of hope that you'll find. And they're written to the nations of Israel and Judah, as well as many of the Gentile nations. As you read the major uh, prophets, you will see the common themes of God saying, you've disobeyed, I still love you, I will restore you. <laughs> that is the three sentence overview of the major prophets. You've disobeyed, I still love you, I will restore you. Chapter 6 is known as the Minor Prophets. It's the final 12 books of the Old Testament. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. These are called the Minor Prophets because, well, they're shorter than the Major Prophets. They still contain messages of warning, messages of hope, a lot of prophecy about the coming Messiah, which we'll get to in a second. And they are the bridge from the Old Testament to the New Testament and point out the consequences of disobedience, but God's still working. God is still bringing hope and promising restoration and the ultimate redemption and restoration that comes from Jesus, the Messiah. Speaking of Jesus, chapter 7 is all about Jesus. Chapter 7 begins the New Testament and is the first four books that you'll find there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four different accounts of the life of Jesus. His teaching, his miracles, his interactions with people, his suffering, his death, his resurrection, and his appearing to his disciples again. The life of Jesus is foundational, and you'll find these here in chapter 7. As with chapter 1, chapter 8 also contains only one book, and that book is the book of Acts. Your Bible might say the Acts of the Apostles. This is what happened in the few decades after Jesus came, died, rose again, and appeared to his disciples. When he ascended back into heaven, well, what happened? How did the early church get formed? And uh, what happened with Peter and Paul and James and John and so many of these early church leaders? How did the message of Jesus spread? How did the church grow from just being a small group of people in, in Judea all the way to what we now know as Turkey and Italy and all spread throughout the known world. That is covered in the book of Acts. And a lot of what you'll find in chapter 9 is kind of like with chapters 3 and 4, where chapter 3 really set the stage for what you would find in chapter 4 and then in chapter 5 and was the, was the narrative in which those pieces fit. Well, chapter 8, that one book of Acts, is setting the context for what we'll find in chapter 9. Chapter 9 contains the most number of books of any chapter. It's not necessarily the longest because the books themselves are frequently short, but it does contain 21 different books, all of which are letters. You've got Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, and Jude. 
these 21 letters written to individuals, written to churches, written to groups of churches in a region, they, these are letters that address challenges of the early church as well as provide guidance for how to live a life once you've said yes to Jesus. What is our life supposed to look like as Christians? You'll find so much practical insight about life and about our identity in Christ in chapter 9, these 21 letters to the early church. Chapter 10 also consists of just one book, Revelation. And while it's the final chapter in this video and this story, of the big God story, you could also say that it's the opening chapter, that it's the first chapter, because Revelation paints the picture of sin and death finally being conquered and dealt with once and for all, the second coming of Jesus and the restoration of that relationship between God and humankind and that relationship going on for eternity. That is chapter 10. So there you have it. The 66 books of the Bible put into 10 chapters that tell the one big God story. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, then like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave me a comment, and share this video with a friend. And I will see you in the next video.